Welcome to Corporate Finance Explained, where we break down the essential topics every corporate finance professional needs to know. This series is narrated by AI, created using CFI's expert training materials, and designed to help you stay ahead in the world of finance. Enjoy this week's deep dive. Welcome to uh, this deep dive. You know, we're going to be looking at financial modeling. Yeah. And it's a lot more than just like rows and columns in a spreadsheet. Right. We're going to be uncovering how companies, both big and small, you know, they use this to make these strategic decisions that determine whether they succeed or fail. Mm. And trust me, when you hear about the billion dollar moves companies like Microsoft and Amazon and Tesla have made. Right. You'll see why mastering this is kind of like a secret weapon in the business world. Yeah. It's really about understanding the levers you can pull today to kind of shape that future. Yeah, you know? exactly. So let's start off by defining what financial modeling really is. Okay. We've all heard the term, uh -huh. but what's the core concept here? I think at its heart, financial modeling is really about building a structured representation of a company's finances. Okay. That allows us to kind of project how those finances might evolve over time. Okay. Um, you know, it's about asking what if and exploring those different scenarios. So less of a crystal ball, yeah. more of a simulator. Exactly. The different financial realities. Yeah. And the beauty of it is it allows businesses to make informed decisions across a whole spectrum of areas uh. from setting budgets and valuing the company to analyzing potential risks and even navigating, you know, mergers and acquisitions. OK, I'm seeing how this goes way beyond number crunching. It does. But can you give me a real world example of how a company might use financial modeling for a major decision? So think about Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard. Okay. A $68.7 billion deal. Huge. They didn't just throw that kind of money around lightly. Right. Microsoft's finance team built what's called the DCF model. Okay. Which is a way to estimate the present value of future cash flows. Okay. And this helped them determine if Activision Blizzard was actually worth that massive price tag. So they were essentially looking into the future, trying to see if the potential returns justified the huge upfront cost. Precisely. And they didn't stop there. Okay. They also did something called synergy analysis, yeah. which is all about figuring out how much money they could save and how much extra revenue they could generate by merging the two companies. Got it. These models were critical to making such a massive decision. That's fascinating. Yeah. It sounds incredibly complex, though. It can be. What are the essential building blocks yeah. of a really strong financial model? You can think of it as a three-legged stool. Okay. You need solid historical data to sown the foundation. Okay. Then you have your assumptions and drivers, mm -hmm. things like projected revenue growth costs and even interest rates. Right. That'll shape your future projections. Okay. And then finally, you have your financial statements. Yeah. The income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement mm -hmm. all linked together to kind of paint a complete picture of the company's financial health. So it's not just about plugging in numbers. No. It's about understanding the forces that drive those numbers. Yes. And how they all interact. Absolutely. Yeah. And gathering this data involves a mix of internal analysis, mm -hmm. you know, digging into company records and external research, looking at market trends and competitor data. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about Amazon. Okay. A company known for its incredible growth. Yes. How do they use financial modeling in their expansion strategy? Amazon's a textbook example of using financial modeling to fuel growth. Uh, they monitor everything. Wow. From projected revenue and operating costs to capital expenditures, mm -hmm. especially when they're expanding into new markets. Okay. For example, when they're deciding where to build a new fulfillment center. Right. They don't just pick a spot on a map. Mm -hmm. They use models to project potential revenue operational costs, mm -hmm. even factoring in things like transportation, logistics, and local labor availability. It sounds like they're trying to leave as little as possible right. to chance. Exactly. Yeah. These models help ensure that their massive investments align with their long-term goals. Mm. They're incredibly meticulous in their approach. Mm -hmm. I can see why financial modeling is such a sought-after skill. Yeah. But let's be honest, uh -huh. building these models can be pretty intimidating. Yeah. Where do you even begin? There's definitely a learning curve. Okay. But thankfully, there are best practices to kind of guide you. Okay. First and foremost, accuracy is key. Right. Your model's only as good as the data it's built on. So no cutting corners on the data collection and validation. Absolutely. Yeah. And your model needs to be well-structured and easy to understand. Okay. Even for someone who didn't build it. Mm -hmm. This means clear labeling, 
logical organization and thorough documentation explaining every step. Okay. Transparency is key. So anyone picking up your model should be able to follow the logic. Yes. Understand the assumptions you've made. Precisely. The goal is to make it easily auditable and adaptable. Okay. Because the business world changes constantly and your model needs to keep pace. Right. You may need to update assumptions, add new data, or even modify the model itself to reflect those changes. So it's not a set it and forget it kind of thing. Definitely not a good financial model is constantly evolving alongside the business. Okay. I can see why having a robust financial model is so crucial for making smart decisions. Yeah. But what are some of the common pitfalls that people new to this might encounter? One of the biggest mistakes is trying to make the model overly complex. Okay. It's tempting to include every detail, every possible scenario. Right. But that can make the model unwieldy, difficult to understand and prone to errors. Uh-huh. It's better to start simple. Okay. Focus on the most critical drivers and assumptions. So starting small and building up as you gain experience. Exactly. Another common mistake is neglecting those crucial error checks. Right. Even a small error in a formula or data entry can snowball into a significant financial miscalculation. Wow. So double check your work religiously. Okay. And utilize Excel's built-in error checking features. Got it. It's worth spending the extra time to ensure accuracy. That's good advice. And I imagine that using unrealistic assumptions can also lead to problems down the line. Absolutely. If your growth rates are overly optimistic or you fail to factor in potential risks, your projections won't reflect reality and the decisions you make based on them could be disastrous. So it's not just about building the model. Oh, uh, it's about understanding the limitations. Yeah. And being realistic about the assumptions you're making. Precisely. Financial modeling is about more than just crunching numbers. Right. It's about understanding the business, yeah. anticipating challenges, and using data to guide strategic decision making. This has been incredibly insightful. We've covered the core concepts of financial modeling and why it's so important. Yeah. We've also looked at best practices and potential pitfalls to avoid. Uh -huh. But now I'm really curious to see how this plays out in the real world. Let's do it. There are some amazing examples of how companies have used financial modeling to achieve incredible things. Perfect. Now that we have a good grasp of the fundamentals. Yeah. Let's see how financial modeling plays out in the real world. Absolutely. We've talked about the theory, uh -huh. but I'm eager to hear some real world examples of how companies are using these models to navigate complex situations, okay. especially when it comes to risk. All right. Let's talk about Tesla. Remember their ambitious push to ramp up production of the Model 3? Oh, yeah. Back in 2018. Wasn't that when Elon Musk was practically sleeping on the factory floor? Exactly. Mm. Tesla was facing a perfect storm of supply chain bottlenecks, cash flow issues, and ambitious production targets. It was a make or break moment for the company. Wow. And their finance team relied heavily on financial modeling to navigate those treacherous waters. So how did financial modeling help them steer clear of disaster? Cash flow forecasting was absolutely crucial. Okay. Tesla's finance team used models to project how long their cash reserves could sustain those incredibly high production costs before they hit profitability. Remember, they were burning through cash at an alarming rate. So understanding their financial runway was critical. It's like having a financial fuel gauge yeah. showing you how much further you can go before you need to refuel. Exactly. And it, it wasn't just about predicting cash burn. Okay. They also used sensitivity analysis uh -huh. to explore how changes in key variables like battery costs, raw material prices, and labor expenses would impact their margins. Mm -hmm. The automotive industry is notoriously sensitive to fluctuations in commodity prices. So understanding those potential impacts was vital. So they were essentially running different scenarios right. to see how vulnerable they were to external shocks. Exactly. They were also using scenario modeling to simulate both best case and worst case production delays. Okay. They were aiming for an aggressive production ramp up. And any hiccups along the way could have had major consequences. Right. By modeling those different scenarios, they could prepare for potential setbacks and have contingency plans in place. It's like having a financial war game, preparing for different battles that might lie ahead. That's a great analogy. And in this case, those war games proved invaluable. Uh -huh. Elon Musk himself admitted that Tesla faced production hell during that period. Yeah, I remember that. But without those robust financial models predicting their cash burn rates and helping them navigate those turbulent times, the company might not have survived. That's an incredible example of how financial modeling can mean the difference between success and failure. Absolutely.
it really highlights how critical it is for companies, especially in volatile industries. It's not just about growth. Right. It's about survival. So Tesla used financial modeling to manage risk during a critical growth phase. But how do more established companies with a different set of challenges use these tools? Let's take Apple as an example. They have one of the largest stock buyback programs in history. Okay. Repurchasing over $90 billion in shares annually. Wow. That's a staggering sum of money. It is. And before they make those buyback decisions, their finance team relies heavily on financial modeling. They use debt versus equity financing models to determine how much cash they can allocate to buybacks without jeopardizing their financial stability. So it's a delicate balancing act yeah. between rewarding shareholders and ensuring the company has enough capital to invest in future growth. Exactly. They also use scenario analysis uh -huh. to assess the impact of buybacks on key metrics like earnings per share and stock price performance. Mm -hmm. They want to make sure these buybacks are genuinely enhancing shareholder value and not just a short-term tactic. It seems like a very data-driven and strategic approach. It is. Not just a knee-jerk reaction to market conditions. And they also use cash flow models to ensure they have enough liquidity for other strategic priorities, like research and development dividend payments and potential acquisitions. Right. Apple is known for its long-term vision, and their financial modeling process reflects that. It's a perfect example of how even mature companies with a dominant market position can leverage financial modeling to fine-tune their strategy and create value. Indeed, it shows how these models can be adapted to a wide range of situations, mm -hmm. from navigating rapid growth to optimizing well-established businesses. We've talked about growth risk management and capital allocation, but what about navigating a crisis? Can financial modeling help with that too? Absolutely. Think about the COVID-19 pandemic and the massive shock it sent through the global economy. It was a time of unprecedented uncertainty businesses were scrambling to adapt. Exactly. And for many companies, financial modeling became a lifeline. Wow. Take Airbnb, for example. Their business model, which relies heavily on travel and hospitality, was hit incredibly hard. Yeah. Their revenue plummeted by 80% in a matter of weeks. That's a devastating drop. I can't imagine the pressure they were under. It was a dire situation and they had to act fast. Right. So their finance team turned to financial modeling to help them chart a course through this completely uncharted territory. So how did they use those models? They ran worst case scenario models to predict how long they could survive with such drastically reduced revenue. They needed to know how much time they had to make adjustments and find a path back to profitability. It's like using a financial model to create a map of different survival paths. Exactly. They also developed cost-cutting models uh -huh. to identify areas where they could reduce expenses without permanently damaging their long-term growth prospects. Tough choices had to be made, and those models provided the data-driven insights to make those choices strategically. So they were essentially using financial modeling to find a way to weather the storm and emerge on the other side. Precisely. They also used liquidity planning models to ensure they had enough cash on hand to sustain operations until travel demand started to recover. Yeah. It was a delicate balancing act. It sounds like they were using every tool in their arsenal to stay afloat. They were. And it's a testament to the power of financial modeling that Airbnb not only survived the crisis, but came out stronger and more adaptable. Wow. They use their models to understand the risks, make tough decisions, and ultimately chart a course to recovery. It's an inspiring story. It shows how financial modeling isn't just a tool for good times. Right. It's a lifeline when things get tough. It's a reminder that while we can't predict the future, we can use financial modeling to prepare for different scenarios manage risks, and make more informed decisions, even in the face of extreme uncertainty. We've covered some incredible examples of how companies like Microsoft, Amazon, Tesla, Apple, and Airbnb are using financial modeling to drive growth, manage risk, and navigate crises. Uh -huh. It's clear that these models are incredibly powerful tools. They are, but it's important to remember that behind every model are people making decisions. That's a great point. We often think about data and models as objective and unbiased, but there's always a human element involved. Absolutely. And understanding that human element is essential for using these models effectively. I'm really interested in exploring that further. How does the human element influence the way these models are built and interpreted? That's a great question and one that often gets overlooked. Let's delve into that after a quick break. We've explored some truly impressive examples of financial modeling in action. But like we were talking about before, um, the human element. Yeah. There's a whole other layer to this that we need to kind of unpack here. It's something that often gets overlooked. 
You know, we yeah. tend to think of data and models as purely objective. Right. But the reality is human judgment plays a crucial role throughout the entire process mm -hmm. from building the models to interpreting the results. So even with all this sophisticated technology, it still comes down to human decisions and human interpretations. Exactly. You can have the most advanced model in the world. Right. But if the people building it and interpreting it aren't asking the right questions or challenging their assumptions, you know, and applying critical thinking, the results can be very misleading. It's a good reminder that these models are tools. Yes. And like mm -hmm. any tool, they can be used effectively or ineffectively. Right. Depending on the skill and judgment of the user. Absolutely. Can you give me some specific examples of how this human element can impact the process? Let's go back to Tesla and their Model 3 production ramp up. They initially used overly optimistic assumptions about how quickly they could scale production. Right. We talked about the production hell they went through. Exactly. Okay. And while there were certainly external factors involved, like supply chain constraints, part of the issue was that their models didn't fully account for the complexities of manufacturing a new car at such a massive scale. Experience and careful judgment are crucial yeah. in setting realistic expectations. So in this case, the human element might have been a bit too optimistic, yeah. a bit too eager to believe that everything would go according to plan. It's certainly possible there's always a risk of confirmation bias, mm. you know, where we tend to favor information that supports our existing beliefs. Right. And when you're working with a visionary leader like Elon Musk, who sets these ambitious goals, mm -hmm. there might be a tendency to kind of lean towards optimism. It's like that saying, hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. Yeah. A good model should help you do both. Absolutely. A skilled financial modeler will always scrutinize those optimistic assumptions, mm -hmm. stress test the model, and explore those what-if scenarios, even if it means challenging the prevailing viewpoint. So they're essentially acting as a counterbalance to that natural human tendency towards optimism. Precisely. They're bringing a healthy dose of skepticism and critical thinking to the process, which sure. is essential for building a reliable model. And another aspect of this human element that we touched on earlier is communication. Yes. It's one thing to build a complex model, but if you can't explain the results to decision makers in a clear and concise way, it's not going to be very helpful. You're absolutely right. A financial modeler needs to be able to translate those complex calculations and projections into actionable insights that stakeholders can grasp and use to make decisions. So it's not just about being a numbers whiz. Mm -hmm. It's about being a storyteller, using those numbers to paint a clear picture of the company's financial health and potential future paths. Exactly. And that storytelling ability is crucial for building trust and buy-in from decision makers. Mm. If they don't understand the model or trust the results, they're unlikely to act on them. This has been a truly eye-opening deep dive into the world of financial modeling. Yeah, yes. We've gone from the basic components to real-world applications, and finally to this crucial understanding of the human element. It's a field that's constantly evolving. Right. With new tools and techniques emerging all the time. Right. But those fundamental principles, yeah. accuracy, transparency, and critical thinking remain essential. Any final words of wisdom for our listeners who might be intrigued by the power of financial modeling? Financial modeling is a powerful tool, no doubt about it. Hmm. It can help businesses make smarter decisions, manage risks, and achieve ambitious goals. Yeah. But it's vital to remember that it's just a tool. Right. The real power lies in the hands of the people building and interpreting those models. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in this field, cultivate those critical thinking skills, nurture your curiosity and hone your ability to communicate complex information clearly and persuasively. Those are the qualities that will truly set you apart. That's fantastic advice. Thank you for joining me for this deep dive. It's been a pleasure exploring this fascinating world with you. It's been my pleasure. And to our listeners, if you're interested in delving deeper into the world of financial modeling, we highly recommend checking out the resources available from the Corporate Finance Institute. They have a wealth of information from free articles and videos to comprehensive certification programs. And remember, financial modeling isn't just for finance professionals. Right. Anyone who wants to understand how businesses make decisions, manage risks, and create value can benefit from learning the fundamentals. That's a great point. Thanks again for joining us on this deep dive into the world of financial modeling. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to Corporate Finance Explained. If you found this episode valuable, be sure to check out more episodes and explore CFI's highly rated courses at corporatefinanceinstitute.com. 
Don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives into essential finance topics. See you next time.